All right, so today we're going to be tying a big pike fly. It's going to be bucktail, crelex, and flashaboo. Um, it's a relatively simple pattern. It just takes a long time. Uh, cool thing about this fly is there's a ton of movement when you do fish it. Um, so let's get started. So I'm just going to lay down a thread base here. Nip that off, and what we're going to do first is grab our orange bucktail here. And I'm going to try and take a clump out of it, maybe right around here. And this clump will probably be roughly the diameter of a pencil. Um, you don't want a ton but you want enough to make, to uh, let that Crelex kind of stand on its own. Perfect. And for this first piece, we are not gonna hollow tie it. So I'm just gonna lay that right on top, do a couple soft wraps, twist it around the shank, and then really put some heat on it, and wrap it down. And that is perfect. And then what I'll do is I will grab my scissors. I'm just gonna trim some of this out of here. You are gonna make a big mess when you're working with bucktail and time pike flies. So make sure you have a good vacuum. Now, after we button that down, I'm gonna take my lice brush, run it through the bucktail, really make sure everybody's separated. And this is where you're going to get some of that nice body from. And next we have our UV orange Crelex. I'll just take a small clump of it here. We'll pull it out. And what I like to do here before I tie it in is grab it right in the middle and kind of taper each end. Just gently pull on all the different little Crelex things and give it more of a natural look than just a flat tail here. Then I'm just gonna lay that right on top. Right on top here. Do three wraps, and then I'm just gonna take my thumb, press it into the Crelex, try and work that material around the shank of the hook. Do a couple more wraps, pull it forward, and then I'm going to try and pull all that Crelex straight back while wrapping it around the body or the shank of the hook right here. And that looks good. And we're building the back part of the fly right now, so I don't necessarily want it to be to have a big volume up here. This part of the fly is meant to be more flat, um, less round, just so we can build the taper of the body of the fly. And that looks pretty good right there. Okay. Now I am going to grab some Flashaboo Magnum Flash in Sunrise. I'll grab maybe four to six strands of it. And what I'm gonna do is I don't want this to be longer than the orange Crelex, so I'm gonna cut off maybe four inches or so. And again, I'm going to pull each side to taper it and then grab it right in the middle and do a similar tie-in to what I did with the Crelex, where I do a couple gentle wraps and try and get it to kind of splay across the body of the fly and then pull the rest back and secure it. And 
and make sure we have some all the way around the fly here. That looks good. And I'm going to wrap that all the way back up to where we tied in that bucktail and that crelex. And we're starting to get the look that we're going for. So next I'm going to grab some super glue. And we are just going to put a dab right here. Make sure we really get everybody all locked in. One of the great things about these Crelex pike flies um, is they're, they're pretty easy to tie and they're cheap. You don't need a ton of materials. All you need is flash, bucktail, and Crelex and a fish helmet or, or some sort of dubbing and, and eyes if you want to. Um, but you don't have to break the bank to tie this fly, which is one of my favorite parts. Okay, and then we're gonna repeat the process right here. But this time, I'm, we're gonna hollow tie it. So, I'm gonna grab another chunk of bucktail, orange bucktail here. Again, roughly, roughly the diameter of a pencil. And flip it around here, point it forward, and then we will tie this puppy in right about there. A couple of loose wraps, try and splay it around the fly, and then tighten it up a bit. Okay. I'm going to grab my pen here, just hollowed out pen, nothing in it, and you just point that over the eye of the hook here, and you can pull that bucktail back like that, and sometimes I'll even come in here with my brush and use this as an opportunity to separate some of those fibers before we tie them down. that and now we're just going to do a pretty standard hollow tie here slowly working our thread back and forth until we create a small ramp so to speak or enough to tie in front of that bucktail here and get it to lay down and you'll notice that I'm going to tie this this relatively flat for a hollow tie because again I want to create a taper on the fly and I don't want the tail to have a ton of body yet. I want it to, to be more flat, to be the smaller part of the fly. And be a little bit more. Perfect. Now we're going to grab our Crelex again. Make sure it's tapered, and then tie some in right on top here. A couple soft wraps, pull that out of there. And I'll take my thumb and just splay it out like that. Grab some more Crelex and keep creating the body here. And then I'll pull it back and then just make wraps over it, kind of like that. And then as you can see, we're starting to get that nice, nice tapered look in the body here. I'm going to grab my brush, run it back through, make sure nothing's getting trapped anywhere. And that looks good. Beautiful. Trim off some of those extras. Now we're going to grab our flash again. Our sunrise flashaboo here. Magnum flash, I'm sorry. 
and grab, you know, six or eight pieces. I'm going to trim them up just a little bit. Just a little bit, and then again, lay those ones in right on top here. And then pull them back and try and spread them around the fly. And put a couple wraps on top of them. Not like that. Starting to look relatively good. Pretty fishy here. Adjust the Crelex to the bottom really quick. Cover up that little gap. Just put some hard wraps in right there. Perfect. Now I'm gonna grab my glue. And just put another dab on top here. So next we're gonna repeat the process one more time. Um, this time with a bit less bucktail. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'll chop it out. And again, we will hollow tie this one. Pull all the short fibers out. Do a couple soft wraps here to spread those out. And then put some pressure on it. Now we'll brush all this stuff out really quick. And then grab our pen again. and splay this back and do one more hollow tie here. We're just gonna slowly work our way back here, building up that thread. Give this back of the fly a little bit of body now. That's starting to look good. And we'll just keep working our thread until we're happy with how that bucktail's standing. I like it right there. Perfect. Now we're gonna grab our Crelex again. Grab a nice big chunk of it this time for the front. And I'll cut it, not cut it, but I'm going to grab it right in half and lay that first half right on top. Couple soft wraps. And I'm going to press my thumb into it and let it splay back out. And then I'll do a couple wraps until we capture it. Happy with that right there. We'll see how we're looking. And gently try not to get too much of our thread wrapped around here. Turn it back over, and what I'm going to do, make sure everybody's all splayed out there, kind of like that, and then we'll grab our brush, run it through, move any trapped fibers, and see if we need more Crelex. So we're going to do a little bit more here. side and down here on the bottom. And that should do it.
pinch it here, take a quick look. I do a bit more here. Not a lot, just uh, just enough to cover this last little bit. Right about there. And then we can do our flash and we'll be looking good. So I'm gonna pull that back out, roll it back over, let it splay out a bit and capture it. Now we are gonna grab our Magnum Flashaboo. Magnum Flash. And, you know, maybe eight to 10 strands this time, do a little bit more, because we're gonna be finishing up this back half of the fly here. And again, I'm just gonna come down, trim just a bit off, so I don't want it to be too long. Yeah, right about there. Lay it right on top. Couple gentle wraps. Try not to trap too much. Then we'll come back up like that. And then I'll use my thumb to separate it all. That looks about right there. So now I'm just gonna put some more wraps on this, make sure it's really secured. Pull these back for a second. And we're gonna whip finish this back part of the fly here. Again, I'm gonna grab my super glue. Put a dab right on top here. And move it around the bobkin. Wonderful. That's looking good. That's gonna have some great movement in the water. So next, I'm gonna attach my shank to it. It's a 35 millimeter shank. We're just gonna pull that right on there, like so. And then we'll secure the shank in the vise. Just pull this out of the way. And tighten it up just a bit. And really lock it in there. So next I'm gonna pull all this Crelax and stuff back and just clip it to the vise. And what we're gonna do is grab our chartreuse bucktail with our olive or chartreuse thread here and work up to the next part of the fly. Put some heavy wraps over this, the opening here to make sure we really lock it down. Make sure it's not gonna open up on us at any point in the future. And then I'll just advance my thread up towards the eye of the hook. And we'll be in good shape here. Okay. And then right in front of where that shank comes together here, I'm just gonna put a couple more here. I am gonna tie in some chartreuse bucktail. So, not a lot. We're actually not going to hollow tie this. Just going to tie it in pretty regular. And 
just going to do a couple gentle wraps and put a little more heat on it. Now I'll just come back through, trim off all this extra bucktail here. Like so. Put a couple firm wraps on it, really lock it all down. And that looks good there. This is going to be a sparse part of the fly, um, so don't worry about really filling it in too much because this will all be covered up. Okay, and then I'm going to do that one more time. And again, I'm not going to hollow tie this. This is just going to be tied normally. I'm just going to lay it over the hook. A couple gentle wraps. Make sure it's nice and evenly spread out. And then pull on it. Really lock it down. Perfect. And just trim that out like so. I'm just going to leave a little bit here just to tie down. And then do some more gentle wraps to secure everything. And again, this is all going to be covered. So this part of the fly does not need to look perfect by any means. And that'll work. So now we will whip finish. And that's one of the fun thing about pike flies is that they do not have to be perfect. And they can be a little sloppy in certain areas if you don't if you want them to be because a lot of it's going to get covered up by the other materials and it's all about the movement so next we will take our Gamagatsu B10S Stinger in 3 aught and lay some thread down and now we have some trailer hook wire um, you can really use anything for this. Uh, I would suggest something with some sort of wire component to it um, just to really secure it and make sure that nothing bites through it. And I am just going to wrap it right on top here. And really make sure my thread's biting down into it. Next, I'm going to grab my super glue. Go right on top there. And then do some more wraps. Now we're going to grab the rest of our, our fly here. And pull it up. And secure it. Put that line right back on top there. Right about like that. And then I will just work it forward. Reclamp that back part of the fly. Then I'm just going to chop off right about that much. And keep securing this thread on top of that other glued part of the line. And this part might take a little while because um, you want this to be bomb proof essentially. And then I'm going to grab a little bit more glue and just lay some right on top there. And I'm going to lay this wire back over itself 
just to create one more little little way of holding it in and keep making wraps and now that should be pretty secure so next we're gonna grab our chartreuse bucktail tie that in so again I'm gonna grab a chunk <clears throat> maybe around the like I said earlier the diameter of a pencil and we are gonna hollow tie this time so I'm gonna face it forward some of this extra here and then lay that on top do a couple gentle wraps really spread it all the way around that hook and then put some more heat on that now I'll come back Trim everything out back here. Like so. And we'll grab our pencil again, or our pen, our hollowed out pen. And push that bucktail back. Now I'm just going to wrap and make a thread bank again, and then we'll put the Crelex over the thread bank. Okay. Now we'll just build up a thread bank here to hold that bucktail back a little bit. Good there. So now we'll grab our chartreuse Crelex. Pull out a chunk of it. And then again, I'll just grab it right in the middle and taper each end. I'm just going to lay it right on top. So now we're going to take some more of this chartreuse Crelex and keep filling it in. A little bit more here on the bottom. And then secure that. And we can take our brush and just kind of brush everything back. Make sure turning out the way we want it to. It looks good. Next we will grab some flash boo and olive. And I'm going to trim a bit off because I don't want it to be too long. Again, I'm going to tie that in right on top here. Spread it out just a bit and then pull those strips of flash back 
Just try and get a nice even wrap around the body here. Without capturing that crelex here. This stuff can be a little tricky to work with. Do my best to grab all that flash and crelex and try not to hook myself with the other hook. Pull it all back. Next, we'll grab some glue. Secure it like that, and then do that one more time. So we'll grab our chartreuse bucktail, cut another chunk out. I'm gonna lay that right on top here couple soft wraps make sure you got it all the way around the hook there and then I'll do some firm ones once again I'll just push all these back like so and we'll do another hollow tie And that should do it just like that. So we'll grab our chartreuse crelex again. And secure that and then just kind of bring it over the top. Like so. And then we'll take another clump of crelex here on the bottom. Soft wraps, bring it over, spread it out a bit, and then lock it in. Just kind of, pull, kind of pull it on each side of the hook here. And then what we'll do, after we secure it all the way back, this can be, like I said earlier, a bit trickier to work with than some other materials, especially when you're working with it in this capacity um, but that looks good and now we're going to grab some more olive flash here spread her out just a bit and then pull it all back and secure it perfect that looks good. Now, a little bit of glue. Next, we're gonna tie in our last bit of bucktail here. And we'll push that back. And we'll just keep working this back, like so. Deciding where our mask is going to go. I like that right there. Now I'm just going to tie in a bit more Crelex here. Don't need much in this final step. Just enough to spread it out over the fly like that. That looks good just like that. Finally, we're gonna grab a little bit more olive flash. Roughly eight to 10 strands this time. And again, we'll trim a bit off here. before we tie it in. Spread it out just a bit on the top and bottom and sides.
<coughs> and then we will whip finish. Get ready to put the fish mask on. Beautiful. So, we are going to get our super glue and fill our mask up here. I'm just going to push it back on there. Make sure it's level. Perfect. And then I will grab my thread and just do a couple wraps right in front, build up a bit of a thread bank here so it can't slide forward. Just enough to keep it where we want it to stay. Perfect. So we'll whip finish that. Now I'm going to grab my eyes. These are the living eyes in the wind color. And we have one. And I'm just going to put a dab of super glue on each side here. Really lock those eyes in. And then come up here and on the side, the holes on the side of the fish mask here, I'm just going to squirt some glue in. Really saturate everything. And then there you have it. That is a double articulated big UV orange and chartreuse Crelex pike fly. Um, not extremely complicated to tie by any means. Um, just a bit time consuming, but in the end, it will all pay off with when you see it swim through the water. This fly has a lot of movement.